Hello, everyone. We're back with another review from the New York Film Festival. I saw this movie virtually. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed safe because... Coronavirus. 200,000 kills. <laughs> Why'd you say it like it was a COD stat? <laughs> Bro, COVID, oh like, <laughs> COVID has so many tactical nukes at this point. <laughs> Jokes about uh, the state of our planet aside and... Uh, the lack of adults that's actually kind of relevant to the movie i'm about to talk about and tell you about so the next film i saw was a film called monopoly of violence mm-hmm. isn't that a title yeah that sounds very interesting so monopoly of violence is a documentary about the yellow jacket protests in france um i don't know if you are aware of the protests that happened in france i am not aware of the protests are you aware of france's protest culture Yes, I am. Okay, so they got mad about a thing, the people. Uh, I think you won't be surprised when uh, that thing they got mad about was a simple uh, plea to ask for equality Mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, capitalism because the people in France feel like the wealth gap is getting to such a degree that it's it's unfair, Mm -hmm. which... Totally is not like America at all in any way, shape, or form, um, which will be a theme that I will go over. Since this is a documentary and a a political documentary and I am uh, me, there are going to be aspects of this review that are like very ranty and the fact that it's not a uh, narrative film and it deals with a lot of political issues and I'm going to get very upset as I'm talking about this. That's okay. You got to do what you have to do. It's not just about the protests and the inequality. It's about police violence and the usage of police violence. I'm just going to like talk about the presentation first uh, before I get into like the horror that is this movie. So the film is not presented in a normal documentary style way. Um, which is the film's it's one of the film's biggest strengths and it's what i love about it it really sets itself apart from basically every documentary that Mm -hmm. i've seen like ever probably Uh, i've seen i've seen my fair share of docs and i mean i even criticize it on the channel like whenever i see a documentary it, it could have you know as much useful information as possible but if it's like plainly presented and it's not shown in an interesting way and if it's just like oh i'm Here's interview and here is archival footage. I'm probably going to be like, oh, it's okay as a movie. You know, the information is probably super duper interesting and cool. But like as a movie, like what are we adding here? Yeah. It's what sets apart like, you know, Free Solo and, uh, you know, Dear Zachary and can't think of another documentary. uh, Gleason. I don't know if you saw Gleason from like just your run of the mill like documentary about bad thing that happened but there's like you know that's not the case all the time there are like documentaries that sort of transcend that the movies that come to mind are like dr ruth i think that was the name of the the documentary i like that one quite a bit just because the subject was so adorable she was just like the best um and uh three identical strangers from two years ago uh was a really great documentary that is presented in a very uh, conventional way but the what happens and what the subject is is so interesting and like sad and just strange that you know it sort of transcends the presentation but this film is very much the presentation because monopoly of violence could have just been like you know just the footage that they show alone of the extent that police brutality goes uh in france would have been enough but mm-hmm. the way that it's presented is so interesting and also there's a lot of metaphors and i love me a nice metaphor if you've seen any of our commentaries (laughs) um (laughs) so it's basically there's two people in a room and they're sitting right across from each other and behind them is a projector that is projecting uh the the footage of police violence and that's what's lighting the entire room so uh they're sort of in a dark room and nothing else is lit besides this projector which is what i assume is the only source of light because it's very high contrast and with the presentation you could sort of feel the gravity of 
what we're about to experience. And it's a very good tone setter because that's, we start the film that way. And mm-hmm. the people that are talking is like a wide range of people. I don't remember exactly every type of person that was represented because, uh, and this is like a gripe I have with the movie is that whenever they introduce a new person, they don't state who they are and what they do and how they're involved until the very end. And it like annoys me because I'm like, who are these people talking? Why are they talking? I agree with what you're saying, but I don't know who you are. There was a part of that that was annoying. But uh, it, it ranges from like journalists to um, to actual victims of police violence to an actual police officer, which I will get into later. The, the people who are watching um, the victims of the police violence are not just watching any incident they're watching what happened to them we're watching them relive that experience Mm -hmm. and it's so awful to sit through because like you're watching them like if you've ever been in like a physical altercation before that sticks with you for a while and whether you win or lose or whatever it's like you think about it and and it like it takes you right back to that moment and oftentimes it was very uh, hard to watch because the sort of things that happened during these protests are not unlike what's happening here in the United States, but there is a specific type of brutality that the United States uh, police force would never be caught on video doing. I mean, not not that they wouldn't be caught doing because we've seen it. We've seen documentation of similar things because at a certain level, they know that they're being watched, but in Francis case, there's sort of a, a level of they do not care whether they're being filmed or not. I mean, there's even there's some cops who in the in the in some of the footage are like, hey, put the camera away and blah, blah, blah. Um, they'll they'll even be like pretty rough with journalists, um, which is not unlike what happens here. I'll, I'll just give out a couple of examples in, in towards the beginning of the film. There's a clip of someone uh, recording Uh, a protester on the floor up against the wall of the building and they're like crouched and they're trying not to get hit by anything and a riot officer takes out his baton and is repeatedly beating him in the head like over and over and over and over again like the clip goes on for like 10 seconds and you know we've seen that uh you know rodney king is a you know fantastic example i guess just seeing it on camera was like very uh sobering not that it would because it definitely happens here i just it feels sometimes here that they that the police care about what they're being filmed doing more than what i saw in this doc police have shot people on camera and stuff and they've lied about what happened even though they recorded it uh which is a, a whole thing it's just you just have to see it and i think what i'm saying will make sense i hope uh, other examples of the th- things that I saw, uh, there's a clip highlighting that the police are hiding their license plates, mm-hmm. which very relevant. Like I said, they're, they're beating protesters who are already down with their batons and stuff. There's a moment in the film where a woman is watching a video of her, a video of herself getting beaten by police in a Burger King, uh, because they retreated into a Burger King because it was getting out of hand outside and they were hiding in the Burger King. And uh, she, I think she was with her boyfriend or something and they were just like together and they were like, oh, what do we do? And uh, one of them said, let's just put our hands up because if we have our hands up, they know we're not going to do anything and so we'll be fine. But little did they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little did they know, like, it's not going to be fun. Hello. I left that space open for you to come to your own conclusion about how that <laughs> yeah. turned out. I was like, should I talk now? I don't know. <laughs> so what happens is that the police go in there and they beat them, like, over and over and over, and they don't stop. And it intercuts between, I mean, there's so many people recording that you could, like, cut together a scene of it. And it's not just, oh, we're from one angle, we're just going to stay here. Uh, there's there's a there's an angle of someone recording outside the Burger King uh, of it happening. And then the people in the Burger King are also recording. And you can hear the screams and just the police. Like, they're literally on the floor, not mm-hmm. doing anything. And they're just beating them down. And there's no reason for it. Like, they've already, like, not given up, but they're, like, not doing anything. Like, they stopped. Uh, there's so many instances of mutilation 
and it's so gross. And it, and it has a lot to do with uh, their non-lethal weapons. You know, here we have rubber bullets, mm -hmm. and there they have a lot of different things. I forgot what they're called, because uh, they, they had a specific name for it, but they're like their equivalent of rubber bullets. And they also throw grenades. <laughs> And not like not like real grenades, but uh, I think they're like they're sort of like tear gas, but they also explode. There's like an inch blast radius. It's not like a flashbang or anything like that, but it's like pretty similar. And um, there's a clip of the police throwing it at a crowd, and someone bent down to pick it up to throw it back, and it exploded in his hand, and his hand is gone. Oh my God. So yeah, that's totally necessary for protests and and it's not even just that there's like there's instances of people with holes in their faces there's there's a couple of people uh in the dock who lost their eye to these uh non-lethal weapons that the police shoot at protesters and that's very similar to what's happening here uh there was a couple of people i saw um on twitter of people who were at protests who got shot by rubber bullets and now they have to wear eye patches because their eye their eyes gone like that's mm -hmm. it yeah, one, one of the more uh, callous things I saw in this doc, which infuriated me. Uh, well, there's a couple of things. The police shot a guy in the head uh, with one of these non-lethals, and he fell to the floor, and he's bleeding all over the floor. Like, blood is just pouring out of his head. People come out of their businesses to see what's happening because it's like the protest is, like, moving throughout the city. They come out. And they see this guy on the floor with blood just all over the all over the sidewalk down the alleyway. They see the police around the corner with their weapons, and they're yelling at the police to help. And the police just walk away. They walk away and they wait for uh, medics to arrive because there are people with medic vests for the protests. So they're so think about that. They made vests for these medics. There's like sp special medic people for protests because they know people are going to get hurt by the police. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. in what world is that okay? Where just the idea of like having, like ambulances are a thing, the ER is a thing, hospitals are a thing, but that's for everyone. But there are, there are medics specifically for a protest. Yeah. And the, the protesters are not the reason why this is happening. They're not there to be like, oh, police officer, you were hit by a rock with your riot gear on are you okay no it's these people who are like getting mutilated by the police for protesting yeah which there will be a debate about nonviolent versus violent protests which i will get into in a second uh, but i'm just stating examples of just the lack of i don't know what to call it i'm just it, it's just barbaric anyway i'm just gonna add more barbaric examples yeah uh, i'm gonna give you two more without spoiling the rest of it because you should just like watch it mm. One, one of the things that startled me, and I'm totally not surprised by this at all, but it was just like seeing it, you know, in an unfiltered, like he did not care that he was being filmed responding in this way. But uh, I think it was journalists or, or was it, pro I don't know. I think it might've been protesters who were asking during the protests because uh, they were like in a standoff with police on this one street. And they're like, hey, uh, please don't shoot at us with these non-lethals because they cause long lasting damage. And, you know, we don't want to be mutilated and we don't want to lose our eyes and stuff. And they, they were very adamant about these concerns and the police are just sitting there listening. And one of them comes out of nowhere and is like, it's easy. And he mimes ducking out of the way in the most sarcastic way possible. Oh, oh my god yeah he's like yeah it's easy and then just like ducks his head and like throws up his hands like and like duh don't you know about ducking even though you don't know when the bullet's gonna hit you until it hits you because mm -hmm. that's how bullets exactly. work yeah um <laughs> and uh yeah that like it's there's that and then i guess this will transition into the next part of what i want to talk about when it comes to this film um there, there was another moment in the film where a woman is talking to the police and she just what she, which is another parallel to what's going what to what happened uh here is uh the police are unmarked and a journalist i think i think it was a journalist uh was asking the police for their badge number and i want i want to assure you that i'm not spoiling the entire movie uh th these are just like small things that happened um that left a big impression on me but uh, there there's a woman asking uh, this guy for his number or whatever so she knows who he is and 
he starts screaming at her and uh, he calls her a bitch and he uh, he's like getting like really aggressive with her like he's about to hit her or something and uh, she's walking away the entire time and he's calling her like a stupid leftist who hates the country Mm -hmm. which doesn't sound at all like people in America (laughs) <laughs> and the thing about it was that like he was so aggressive towards this woman and he only like advanced on her when he knew that his boys were with him like when he there's there's a couple of times where he looks behind him and he checks if his fellow officers um were there to back him up and whenever they got closer he moves closer and it's very much a mob mentality thing going on yeah i want to ask you a question and I want to know what your answer is. This is sort of, there's a part of it that's sort of a trick question, but I want you to answer as honestly as possible. Mm -hmm. What's outside my house? That's not the question. (laughs) Okay, I was about to be like, I don't know. Okay, it was a truck. Okay, so the question is, what is the police's job? To protect and serve, isn't it? Who? Or what? The people. Okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, the people. But like, all the people, no matter what. So that's an admirable, idyllic answer that I wish was the truth. Yeah, me too. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But the police's job is to defend capital. And by capital, I mean institutions, uh, property, things that people own. Uh, That's their job. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it happens. You know, like I'm not I'm not here to bash cops, although um, a cab and. (laughs) Actually, during the doc, I saw a lot of ACAB graffiti in France, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not like ACAB uh, adjacent, but literally, like, they just wrote ACAB. So that was interesting. I was like, oh, American culture really do be permeating, though. Yeah. Um, but, like, there's certain sects of policing that I'm like, okay, you know, this is necessary. Homicide detectives, you know, things in that, that nature where they're solving things that happened and they're finding out who did the bad thing. I can respect that, but oftentimes that can be misused because you have people who are arrested wrongfully and they spend, you know, 20 years of their life for something that they didn't even do. So like it's still an imperfect system, but the merit of solving something that happened to somebody, uh, you know, I can get behind, you know, especially with violent crime. Like violent crime, yeah. That is an issue that I think mostly police should be involved in because with some violent criminals, of course, their pension for uh, doing more violence will probably increase as time goes on. So if they're looking for this person, probably want police around for that. But in almost every other case, they don't need to do what they do. They like like they just have too many things to do and they're trained for violent crime so why have them doing things that they shouldn't be doing it doesn't make any sense Mm -hmm. um but their job is to protect the wealthy and the you know the status quo when when you see protests nowadays or i guess in general okay so in this case they're protesting uh economic inequality and the eroding middle class and the lack of um, opportunities and a lack of protections for the people, you know, because the elites and the billionaires are getting everything. Why? How is that not more criminal than uh, someone graffitiing a wall during a protest mm-hmm. or gathering together and saying, you know, we don't like this? How is the balance shifted in that way? It doesn't make any sense. There's a woman in this film who has this amazing response to uh, this clip of her getting beaten by the police, and she's talking about the nature of violence, and the film is called Monopoly of Violence, and she talks about the violence of what happens to people every day. When we talk about violence, we see, you know, hitting someone, shooting someone, what are other types of like rape? All those, all, all those different physical things as violence. Mm-hmm. But is that any more violent than a politician saying, "Hey, I'm gonna do this for you," and then lying about it? Like, I'm gonna change your life. I'm gonna give you a job. I'm gonna hold the powerful accountable, and then not doing it is isn't that violent? Mm-hmm. Isn't there a violence in that that someone has to live their life 
in poor conditions because the government decided that they don't deserve reparations. Having Amazon pay no taxes is violent. There's so many things that happen here that are so frustrating that we have to sit through and that mm -hmm. we have to uh, live with. You know, even even what's happening right now with like Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death. And like what they're trying to do with it and stuff. Merrick Garland was Obama's nominee for nine months prior to the election. And Mitch McConnell did nothing about it. And now there's like six weeks left until the election. And he's like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just go. Let's just go as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, with all the bills that are sitting on his desk, with you know how uh, Trump responded to COVID and not doing anything, not causing a panic, not telling people what was happening, that's violent. I mean, in, a, in literally, in a, in a literal uh, way, that lie caused the deaths of 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. How is a lie like that not more violent than someone throwing something through a window or uh, looting or graffitiing a wall? Why is that perceived as more violent than a elected official lying? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. There's even a point in the film where we get to hear the president of France talk. And he, has, he tries to make a point, a really stupid point, that, uh, you know, we have elections. And, uh, you know, you get to s say your piece during the election. It's such a bad argument because politicians lie. Politicians lie all the time. Mm -hmm. Protesting is making sure that our voices are heard. Like you can say like voting is important. I'm not saying that voting is not important, but direct action is the backup to voting. If you say that you're going to do something and then and I say, oh, I believe in you. And then when you get elected, uh, you don't do that thing. Direct action and protest is the next step. Because you didn't keep up your end of the bargain. Your campaign is uh, what you're bringing to the table. And our vote is what we're bringing to the table. So if we elect you, then you have to keep up your promise. You have to say, you have to do exactly what you said you were going to do. Like when Barack Obama said that he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay. He never did that. That mm -hmm. never happened. And so, you know, there are people being imprisoned right now in Guantanamo Bay. It's probably awful right now because of what's happening in the world but it, it's totally not going to lead to more radicalizing at all <laughs> nope what's another example of a lie oh colin colin powell lying to the entire world almost 20 years ago uh about wmds in uh iraq mm -hmm. black people are protesting and asking hey can can we not be killed by the police can we not fear for our lives can we not be disproportionately uh, attacked by the police yeah and then there's some people who like break something and then the the media is like oh no someone someone is at target uh oh no how is target gonna feel when target gets hurt like who cares mm -hmm. target is insured target is fine and yeah sure i'm talking from a very biased point of view but no one's objective i guess police sympathizers and blue lives matter people and people in the police, they think that they're objective. You know, that they're like, oh, you're not seeing the other side of the story. There's even a police officer in this film who gets into a debate with a journalist about how bad the violence is. And the police guy is trying to justify the violence and say, oh, well, you don't know what I see every day. You don't know what I see my friends go through every day when they make fun of us, when they throw stuff at us. And it's like, how is that in any way, shape or form equal to what you do to people mm -hmm. physically all the time. Yeah. Like how is a rock being thrown at you when you have riot gear on the same as when you repeatedly bludgeon somebody or you take someone's eye out or you rip a hole through their face or you lay your knee on someone's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds or when you choke somebody out or uh, when, you, when you take a girl and you take her to prison and all of a sudden she's dead in Sandra Bland's case. Like she, mm -hmm. like she was just, oh, she died. I don't know what happened. Like how is that not worse? There is a serious contempt by the police for the people that they serve. It's just frustrating because they, I feel like a lot of them know what they're getting into. And sure, I'm not counting out someone's uh, idealistic uh, reasons for joining the police force 
at first or in general. Like, sure, I'm sure that when a lot of people go into the police force, they're like, yeah, I'm going to change and I'm going to I'm going to be a good force for the community and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's not what's happening. And that's not what we see every day. And it's just mm. not the truth. Uh, if, if you think that beating people or mutilating them or killing them is a equal punishment for property damage when the thing that they're protesting about is worse than property damage that is probably insured, then you're on crack. <laughs> you smoke yeah. crack. There is no other way to justify it other than you are smoking crack. And uh, when I was watching the movie and I was hearing this police officer like whine about his fifis getting hurt, I was thinking like, is he a police union guy? Like he has to be a police union guy. And then the movie ends and then you see like what every every person does. And that guy, he's a police union guy. He's the head of the police union in France or one mm -hmm. of them. And I'm like, of course he is. Because these people, all their job is to do is to uh, dodge accountability for what some of these police officers do. And it, it blew my mind that that is something that doesn't just happen here. Like that, that's one of the things that sets this doc apart from most documentaries uh, about police violence or that I've seen or just like inequality is, I guess, I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it. It seems like in these Western nations that it's all under capitalism and they all work the same way. I mean, that's the reason why a film like Parasite resonates so hard with people here because they yeah. see it every day. Mm -hmm. Because it's a disease that like permeates through all these countries. We're in the year 2020 and this equality thing is not working out because there are people who do not care. And those people aren't just random people on the street. It's literally the people in charge. Yeah, it's literally the people in charge uh, and it's frustrating. And I'm sure, like I said, that I could be called bias and this film could be called bias because it's telling mostly one point of view. But I think that's nonsense. Uh, I think in this country and um, with a lot of centrist moderates uh, in the political sphere and in media and, you know, just all over there is this bias toward fairness that they think that there is two sides to every story. And that's just not true. Sometimes there's multiple sides to a story. And in this case, there is one side to this story. There is one. There is not multiple. The police chose to be police. I'm sure some of them were born in poor economic conditions, but from the look of most of the people that I see in this doc, and just how police salaries work for the most part in the United States, it, there's a good chance that the police in those poor areas are not from that area. They go into that city, they take their tax dollars, and they put it in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's all tax money. And those police officers don't live in those cities. And that's another level of violence. That's just money from poor people that are being taken from them and put in rich areas. Like, that's the same thing as Jeff Bezos not paying any taxes. It's the same thing. That's another level of violence at play. When, when you're giving money to some, someone and then that money's not going back into your, into your city or your neighborhood, uh, yeah, of course, there's going to be even more problems. And violence, uh, in the literal sense, doesn't solve any problems. And when you see videos of, like I mentioned before, of the police saying, oh, it's easy, and then ducking, or literally uh, shooting someone's eye out, or uh, throwing uh, an explosive at protesters, and then someone losing their hand because they don't want to be gassed. Or in another case, um, someone uh, flicking off the police, which is something else that happened in this doc. Someone flipped off a police officer, and then the police officer got so upset, his little fifis got hurt so bad, that he took him and dragged him to the floor and said, why did you flip me off? Like, these mm -hmm. dudes have emotional issues. And I don't know if uh, France has the same freedoms of speech that we have, but that happens here all the time. All the time. Uh, you question a police officer, you say the wrong thing, and they think that that's the law. Like you, like like they forgot about the First Amendment or something. When the First Amendment is targeted towards the police, it's targeted towards the state. 
it that i mean that's what it's for the 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 way that the first amendment is written is not you know you can say whatever you want to anybody it's it's to protect yourself from being incarcerated and the police do not care about the first amendment because if their feelings get hurt then they have to do something and i'm sure that is not the case with every cop you know mm-hmm. some cops are like oh okay whatever fine my feelings are hurt i'll just move on but if we're seeing a new example of this on a weekly basis, then it's a problem. And in this case of seeing violence in this way, of seeing the police do this to people, there is no other side to the story that is worth listening to. There is no debate here. Once you see the police doing this to people, that's all the context you need. There is nothing protesters are doing that that is warranting getting beat half to death or causing concussions or mutilation. There is no good reason for the police to mutilate its citizens. It's just not mm-hmm. the case. I just, yeah, that's it, really. <laughs> okay, but any, but anyway, what do you give this film <laughs> out of 10? <laughs> um, oh my God, did I just talk for an hour about police violence? Okay, um, I'm so sorry, Glenn. Hello, it's okay. You were going in. I said, okay, let me give him the floor. I'm stuck between an 8 and a 9. So mm. I'm I'm giving this film an 8 out of 10. But I could give it a 9 if I watch it again. Because there's so many great things about this doc. And there's so many things about the doc that are like very piercing and frustrating. And seeing the people living this and seeing, seeing them relive their trauma and seeing... People uh, talk about, you know, the philosophy behind this and what they perceive that to be. And also even that one police union guy, like, just mask off in his feelings. It, it's it's very telling. And these people are very raw and they're very open to discussion. So uh, I'm giving the Monopoly of Violence an 8 out of 10. <sighs> Go watch it, guys, whenever you can. You watch it. I will watch it. Just get ready for subtitles. I was not prepared. I knew it was French, but I, do, I was not prepared for the amount of talking. It's it's one of my favorite movies of the year, probably. Uh, just because I've, I've been giving out a lot of 6 out of 10s. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It'd be like that. It's okay. It'd do be like that, honestly. Uh, if you enjoyed this rant, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, share with your friends. Uh, the Matrix video, which is another rant, is coming soon, I swear. Bye. Bye, guys.